Hey, welcome back for another episode of Secrets from Saddle, all things cycling with your host, Sylvie Dow. And today is Friday, which means it's Coach's Corner, Coach's Tip. I'm going to give you a little bit of whatever it is that you're looking to gain more information. But today, I have the most amazing little discussion that we are going to talk about, and we're going to really break down. And it's something that I personally have never thought of until I downloaded this book, Ride Inside by Joe Friel and Jim Rutherford. So if you don't have this book, download it, listen to it, then go buy it for reference. And by the way, I am going to have Joe and Jim hopefully on my podcast in March. So make sure that, and we are going to dive inside this book. So ride inside. I put a link above to go get it on Amazon. Um, and uh, yeah, so make sure you subscribed and your notifications are on so that you do not miss my interview with Joe Friel. I am super excited uh, because there's so much in this book. And as if you've ever gotten into cycling, then odds are you have picked up one of his books, like the Cycling Training Bible, the Triathlon Training Bible, Training Over 50. He's got a bunch of them and um, he's just the most amazing. And I can't wait to meet him and ask him all a bunch of questions. That being said, uh, guys, gals, if you have questions, put them in the comments for Joe and I will bring them to the interview. So here's your call to action. In the comments after today, put what you would like to ask Joe. If you were to, able to sit down, what would you ask him? Now, let's get into this. So when I got this, I've been cycling coaching for like over 15 years. I've coached over 900 ladies. I do inside winter uh, programs. I do tons of coaching within my cycling club, Cycle Fit Chicks. Um, we've been going strong for 13 years. So that's where I do a lot of my coaching for ladies in the club. And like I said, over 900 women. And there's a phrase that I have always been using, and you probably use it too, and we're going to break it down. Now, have you ever used the word efficiency when it comes to cycling? Just raise your hand. I have tons. And now we're going to talk about economy. Economy with regards to cycling. Okay, so efficiency and economy are not the same thing. Now, I was like, what is economy? Because as soon as I started listening, and here's another podcast, go back to my Monday's podcast with Hunter Allen. I think it's number 31. And he talks about economy and efficiency. So he breaks it down as well. So we got talking about that. But here's the thing. We all talk like whenever I do my courses, I'm like, you want to be more efficient. And I've never heard the word economy before until I got into this book, Ride Inside. And they talk about economy. They don't talk so much about efficient. They don't talk about efficiency at all because here's the thing. Efficiency is internal. So if you're talking about internal efficiency, so that is like how our muscles work, um, the, you know, the stroke volume in our heart, efficiency, okay? So economy is how we work as a unit. So if you think about economy, let's go back, let's go to cars because we always, um, talk about economy with cars. Like, is it an economical car, right? Is it going to get me better miles per gallon or kilometers per liter? Like I want an efficient car, sorry, eco economical car, right? It's going to run 
farther and faster on less. So that's kind of the same thing when you talk about um, our bodies. Now I have three things that you can do or not do, or there's three things that, you know, economy can affect. And there's basically one that you can, well, actually there's two out of the three that you actually have uh, control over. And we're going to talk about that. But let's just break down economy a little bit further. So we want to be more economical as a unit on our bikes. So we want to get faster. We want to be more powerful so that we can go longer on less. And that I'm not talking about fuel. I'm talking about like your muscles, your power, like you're getting stronger so you can go, you know, with less output, right? Okay, so let's think about this. Go, we're gonna go back to cycling. You know, this is about how we can get further and faster with less energy output. Um, some people are just more economical than others. Um, and sometimes you can change that, sometimes you can't. Uh, we're going to talk about in a minute in those three points that I have. Well, you know, the amount of energy extended while riding at any one given time will determine how economical you are. So if you can right if you're at your if you're you know redlining at zone four then and you're starting to burn out are you being more economical like have you built up your fitness level so that you can say go on an a ride over a b ride do you know what i mean um so greater economy equals greater fitness um and then we, so economy is determined as a cyclist. How, how does the economy determined as a cyclist? So we think about oxygen. Now we're, I'm not gonna get too technical because that's not what this is about. We're gonna get into the points, but how is, econ so economy term is a cyclist. So you go back to oxygen. It takes oxygen to convert carbohydrates and fats into energy. So we are going to, we're not going to talk about fuel, but that is part of it. Okay, there's other things that we're going to talk about before that. So as the energy go up, goes up, the oxygen goes up, how does an average cycle determine that? Well, we can't typically determine that without going to a lab. And you've seen those pictures of people, they have the mask on and they're measuring the CO2 coming out while they're cycling well you know for 99 percent of the rest of the population we can't really determine that but we can definitely determine that through fitness and through what we do um how does an average cyclist improve their economy with training which is how oxygen is consumed economy is equal to the fitness level so if you have a lower economy maybe you're just a beginner um, and you're not too fast right now, your strength, you're just getting started, um, you're learning skills, things like that. Genetics can also play a role. Um, it can't be changed, but let's focus on the things. So let's go into the tips um, or these three points. Now we talk about the first one is genetics. Now genetics is something that you know you inherit from your family this is the number one and it can be your body structure um it can be your leg length it can be your torso length so you know with some people who have longer torsos so you your bike has to be set up differently you have shorter torsos longer legs shorter legs tongue you know what i mean your arm length everything kind of plays a role and um you know to be more economical on your bike you probably have to get a good bike fit to help out in that department. So, you know, and here's a little tip or a little something to think about. My girlfriend was telling me she was had, she's always been experienced like real discomfort on her bike. 
And so she went in to get a bike fit and her and the bike fitter measured her her hip bone to be longer. So longer than normal or was it shorter? It was shorter or longer. But in any case, what she suggested was shortening up her crank. And when she did it, everything changed. Everything became like flowers and rainbows and unicorns. Like it, it just eliminated all the um, discomfort that she was experiencing. So think about things like that, because that is really thinking out of the box is which, you know, like changing up your crank to fit your body structure so that you can now put, and she said, as soon as she changed that, her power output went up like 50%. So there's her economy. She just changed that thing about her bike and it created, um, you know, it allowed her to go faster. So she was going faster, less output. Um, the number two is, number two is flexibility or lack of flexibility. Now this is something you can definitely work on. I've seen so many cyclists as a coach and doing these uh, programs that tight hip flexors, tight hamstrings, tight calves, um, can lower back, can, it can really restrict you from being able to put out a lot of power in your legs. If you can't even stretch your leg out, so how can you imagine being able to put the maximum amount of power into your pedals? Very hard. Um, and the thing is, and the same with being with really tight hamstrings and a lower back. So what can you do? These are things you can work on and it takes time and you have to implement it all the time so that you're consistently flexible and so and so yoga or you know just regular stretching after your workout whether you're inside or outside or maybe you just stretch a couple times a week I personally make sure that I am flexible that I can bend over and touch the floor I have certain uh, stretches that I do all the time to that ensure that my back like from my neck to my ankles I can I have optimum flexibility especially in my hamstrings so that also that eliminates the chances of injury okay so let's think about that like how flexible are you and if you say oh I'm really tight well then your economy is lower than what it could be so think about that you could be affecting you could improve your economy by becoming more flexible so is it worth it to you to start stretching and being intentional about that i think it should all right number three is your physical um physical makeup so this is like your cycling skills like do you have cycling skills or do you just get on your bike and you just hammer because that's all you know, and you think that that's how you're gonna get from A to B and up the hills and, um, and you're tired out quickly and you're just like, yeah, I'm just a monster. Well, <laughs> you can be definitely more economical in all those situations with good technique. And that in itself can eliminate a lot of lost energy or a lot of wasted energy that you can keep for later or like you don't have to put out as much energy to say a climb hills where you can become more economical and implement pedal stroke techniques and um, uh, getting into different drills that give you the strength and the power and the speed to get up your hill faster, right? Because we always have that one hill that you go, okay, I start at the beginning of the season. It takes me five minutes. Now I want to get faster. I want to go up that hill faster. So what am I going to do? Am I just going to hammer up there 
or am I going to implement some skills that are going to make it easier to get up that hill, right? Now, what skills are we talking about? Well, I was just talking about pedal stroke or pedal form, and that's probably the number one skill that very few people even think about um, or even are aware that there is skill around pedal strokes. Um, and this is something that I specialize in with my programs is really, really focusing on that technique. And it's kind of like building the foundation of your house. When you have the foundation, which is the bike skill, the cycling, the pedal stroke form or pedal form, then you implement it in everything else you do, like your hill climbing, like your speed, um, time trials. So that's, so through my program, the one that I've, I've put together, and I'm just going to plug it right now because that's kind of where I'm niching down is pedal form because it is the base of everything that goes with cycling. So I have a four hour cycling skills intensive. And what it does is the first hour we break down the pedal form and I look at your pedal form and I give you um, advice and feedback as to how to improve it. Then you take that pedal form, you apply it to hill climbing. I help you um, and give you hill climbing tips for that. And then we get into speed and power and strength. And then we finish it up with nutrition. So putting it all together. Remember, we talked a little bit about fuel. <laughs> you know, like, how long can you go on a power bar? That's kind of like the efficiency. You know, how, how far are you going to go? Um, so improving your pedal skills is number one. Now, come on over here. How you doing? So we're over here near my bike and I'm going to give you a little bit of a tutorial on pedal stroke. So here's our pedal. Now we talk about the economy and how pedal stroke plays a huge role. Now, novice, beginners, even intermediate cyclists who aren't aware about the four quadrants of a pedal stroke have a very boxy square um, pedal stroke when it comes to cycling. Or I like to call it oval. It's like a power down and a power up and a power down and a power up. So it's, it's very oval, kind of like piston lights, like pom, pom, up, down, up, down, up, down. And now what I teach is the four quadrants, the top, and it is a box, but the thing is that we break it down as to how to make it more fluid. And those experienced cyclists, like the pros and people who have been properly coached, get this because your economy, I don't like to say efficiency, but I can't say efficiency now, can increase by 20%. Or hey, how about thinking like, your speed can increase by 20%. Imagine that. Like, would you not be, you want to be 20% faster on the hills? Trust me, when you implement this pedal stroke, you feel the change immediately in speed. It's amazing. And when you can implement that, like, you're like a motor train, like a motor car just going up the hills. Like, um, otherwise, you're just like, bomb. you're waiting to fall over. You're slowing down. It's up, down. So imagine you implement this and you become, boom, over the top, power down, sweep, pull up, kick forward, power down, sweep. Sorry. <laughs> kick forward, power down, sweep, pull up, kick forward, power down, sweep, pull up until it's round like that and fast. So that's where I want to think, like just in, think about, you know, where is it that you can improve in your pedal and your cycling, right? I've given you three things. One, 
is, um, you know, genetics. So you take those genetics and you make sure your bike is fit properly to those genetics, right? Whether your leg is too short, too long, um, your arms are longer than normal, small torso, long torso. If you're feeling that something just isn't right, get a bike fit. That will help you immensely. Like the story from my girlfriend. She's like night and day when she changed the length of her pedal. She's like, oh my God, because that's an investment right there. Um, so she changed that and her power went up. That's an increase in economy right there. Number two was your flexibility. And that's something you can definitely implement. You got a little bit of time, five, 10 minutes in front of the TV at night, get on the floor and start stretching or start getting into a yoga class or online yoga or something. Physical makeup is your cycling skills. How are you doing on the bike? Do you know, you know your pedal stroke? is one of them. And here's a couple others. Um, you know, if you have the option of getting on rollers, rollers will force you to smooth out your pedal stroke because you cannot pedal in a box or an up down and survive on the rollers. So if you want to put yourself through that, you could definitely do that because being solid and, and fluid and straight is a beautiful thing, especially if you're a triathlete or a time trialist. You need, you know, that straight line, power output, consistent rollers are amazing. Um, then, you know, speed drills are one. So you're going to want to, um, you know, think about getting faster. Speed drills are one way of getting faster. Okay. First you implement and you get the skills for proper pedal stroke form and go check out my program. It's quick. It's fast. You can take the information that you learn and apply it the next day. It's amazing. I do that. I do though this program over 16 weeks. So it's really drilled into everybody who leaves and it's like a no-brainer when they get out on the road because they're always thinking about it. Now the next thing is that can improve your economy is the way you corner. Now this you can think well I'm not a racer why would I want to corner but everybody's going to corner because you got to go around corners. So what's your cornering like? Do you stop pedaling? Do you slow down? Do you apply the brakes? Things like that. You know, like slowing down. Next one, sprinting. Um, in my program, you're going to learn how to sprint properly with good, e like, e I want to say efficiency, but good economy. Um, hill climbing. We talked about that. That's another one. You want to be fast. You want to, like, people like, I just can't make it up the hills. It's so hard this and that. And if you have the right technique and the knowledge of how to do your hill climbing, like you'll go out and kill it. Trust me. We do hill climbing once a week. We, we meet and we do hill climbing uh, intervals and we do something different every week. And it's always amazing. And if you join my four week intensive, a four hour intensive, you will get my nine uh, favorite hill climbing drills for free. Um, and then drafting is another one, huge, huge economy saver. Because if you can stick in a draft and not work, so you know when you're drafting, you're, you're always like the person at the front is doing 100%, the next person is 80%, then 70, 60, 50, and you're at the back, you're just sort of hanging on and, and uh, you're having a great old time. So that is a great example of, you know, economy, like you're, you're still working as a group, but you're not putting out the maximal effort at the front. So, and then when the, the last person or you do rotation, you then move to the back and you're 
you're le working less effort um, as the one in the front. Then you got recovery. You know, how are you recovering? Are you recovering quicker? Does it take a long time to recover? So that can slow you down as well. Um, and then strength training is a huge one. And not many people put much effort into it. They just think about, yeah, I'm gonna get on the bike. I'm gonna hammer it out eight to 10 hours a week and that's gonna make me stronger. But here's the thing. You need to have strong muscles all over. Cycling is not just about your legs. You need a strong back. You need a strong core. You need, you know, muscles in your arms. You definitely need to build muscles in your legs. So if you're stronger, you got uh, strength training or cross training, it's going to help with injury prevention and um, just increased power, right? You're stronger, you're more powerful, you're more economical. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. So you can ride faster with the same energy output or less. So ask yourself, how economical, do a little audit. How economical are you right now? Go up for your next ride and say, eesh, is my cadence, oh, here's another one. I'm gonna add cadence. If your cadence is in at 90 or above, you're not working on speed. You're not getting much faster. If it's hanging out at 70 or 80, you're never gonna increase your speed. Speeding up your cadence is another one. I'm gonna add that to my list. That's gonna make you faster. And if you can, you know, if you got strength, you got power, you have speed, you're more economical, and you're riding faster with less or the same output. And that's where you want to be. So that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Um, you have lots to think about. Like I said, go check out my four our cycling skills intensive. You'll get everything we talked about here. You'll start with the foundation of your pedal stroke, which is so important. Just think about it. Boom, round, instead of like ooh, oval, because the way you left your rides outside is the way you're riding right now, is the way you're gonna ride this summer. And you're not gonna get as forward and you're not gonna progress like you hope to. So with that, have an amazing day. Don't forget to put on those notifications so you don't miss these great tips. Yay! And um, Joe Friel's um, interview coming up. And go back and check Hunter Allen's interviews. He's another amazing resource when it comes to uh, knowledge about training. His, his episodes were great. And, um, and don't forget to leave me a five-star review. And remember, if you were to talk to Joe Friel, based on like, if you've read one of his books, what kind of question would you want to know? Ask him, because I need some questions. So put some in the comments. I will go gather them and I will bring them out um, in our interview and Here's, I'm gonna put the link in the description for you to go check out his book or books. You can get all of them together. You know how Amazon is, you bundle everything. Um, if you have not read them, go do it because they will change the way you train. So with that, and hopefully this podcast episode will change the way you train and I'll see you in my program. Take care. And the next one is next week and I will have them monthly. So don't, don't delay, get those skills now. Um, so you can implement them while you're training inside and then they'll translate to outside. You'll also get the video, um, some of the videos that will help you out. All right, take care and have an amazing weekend over and out. Coach Sylvie. Love y'all. Mwah.